Hey, what's going on? Today I'm gonna to share how I converted this main bedroom into a podcast studio. I'm gonna run through all the gear that I use and the types of podcast studio setups that we can get away with in just one small bedroom. So if you've ever wanted to set up a podcast at home cheap and look like Joe Rogan or one of your favorite podcast studios, this is the video for you. So the first piece of gear that is essential is the microphone. This is a Shure MV7. These are kind of the baby brother of the famous SM7B microphones. They're nice and affordable. You can get XLR and USB versions. So we're going for the XLR um, so we can run it into a mixer, which I'll get into shortly. An important thing to note with these mics is that the windscreen is actually replaceable. So we've gone ahead and replaced them with the RK345 windshields or windscreens. Uh, the reason for that is that they're a bit longer and they're gonna reduce the pops and the plosives, so the pez and the sez when you're speaking into it. And they kind of look like the SM7Bs also with that elongated windscreen. We used to use the Rode PSA1 adjustable boom arms, but they can kind of get in the way of your face and it just distracts you from the other person that you're talking to when the, the boom arms are waving around all the time. So we've gone ahead and got the desktop stands, the DS1s by Rode, and they're just nice and portable um, and they work perfectly with the, the Shure MV7. Nice and compact little setup there. On top of that, we now have a TV, which is really cool to have in the studio space. And that allows us to show video. And then obviously the audio is one of the most important parts as well. So for the video part, we have a Google Chromecast in the back, which allows us to send videos and images wirelessly from like a phone or a tablet. And um, that's pretty simple and straightforward. We also have a Belkin mini display port to HDMI cable that plugs into the MacBook Air that we're using. And you can just essentially Google stuff on the go on the fly and that will send the video to the TV for us to look at and comment on. So with the audio we have a digital to analog converter taped in the back of the TV and that essentially runs the audio from the digital file on the TV into an analog form that then goes into the mixer on its own track. So that's the main setup that we have but we also have another little gadget that allows us to have guests call in virtually or remotely via Skype or StreamYard or Zoom or something like that and that's the Audio Technica ATR 2X USB adapter. And basically what that does is allows us to have an audio in and an audio out. So the headphones and the microphone into this adapter and that goes into the USB, which then plugs into the computer. So they are all the audio inputs. And now all of that stuff has to feed into somewhere and get recorded somewhere. So all of the lines get recorded into a Behringer Zenx 1204 mixer. And I'll break it down quite simply for you guys. So there's two lines, there's two tracks for the main two microphones that I mentioned, track one and track two. That's pretty straightforward. And they are both via XLR cables. And then for the TV audio, as I said, it has a digital to analog converter. Out of the analog converter are two RCAs, left and right, that go into two 6.5 millimeter jacks on the Behringer mixer on their own tracks into the corresponding left and right inputs as well. So that's two lines for the microphones, one line for the TV, and then there's a fourth line, as I said, for guests if we ever want to have them. And that is running a 3.5 millimeter jack from the Audio Technica adapter into a left and right 6.5 millimeter jacks on their own separate line on the mixer. So pretty straightforward, four inputs, two mics in person, one TV, and then one for the guests. So there's so many different configurations that we can use with the current setup. We can have four people in person, we can have four people in person plus a guest, even with a TV. So there's just so many avenues and so much versatility in this setup. And yeah, it's pretty crazy that you can get away with all of this in just one bedroom. So now that all the audio from all these tracks are mixed into the Behringer mixer, we need to get them out and recorded. And for that, we use a Zoom H6 Black portable recorder. So it's pretty straightforward. We have two 6.5 millimeter jacks for a left and right audio track coming out of the mixer into the line inputs one and two on the recorder. But there's one crucial step that you have to add in if you plan on having guests call in with the Audio Technica adapter, and that's having a line going out of the mixer before it gets mixed to the recorder, feeding back into the Audio Technica USB adapter so the guests can actually hear what we're saying minus their own audio coming in from their microphone. And for that, you use the FX send output on the mixer. So essentially that's a 6.5 millimeter jack in the FX send output on the mixer into the 3.5 millimeter stereo jack on the adapter itself. And again, that all that does is mix everything down in the mixer minus the guest audio so they can hear everything that's happening live in studio here. So once the main left and right channel are plugged into the Zoom H6 recorder, we have to worry about a couple of other things. One is power, so we use a portable power bank to supply power to the Zoom 
H6 recorder so we don't burn through AA batteries all day. And then we have audio out going into our headphones. So once everything's mixed down in the mixer, sent to the recorder and recorded, we wanna hear the final mix, exactly what it's gonna sound like for the listener. That audio line is a 3.5 millimeter jack into a Behringer headphone amplifier that allows us to control the headphones that we have here in studio independently so we can each adjust our own levels to our own liking. The headphones that we currently use are Audio-Technica ATH M20Xs and they're just running through a 3.5 millimeter jack into a 6.5 millimeter on the actual headphone amp. And again, that's just to control individual levels. So we're not too loud and the TV is not too loud or anything like that. So that's pretty much all the audio stuff covered. We have microphones, we have TV, we have guests. So you're probably wondering what else is there? A podcast is just audio, the audio sounds covered. But these days I think podcasts are probably more important or more impactful with their video aspect included. So we like to have the vibe set, the studio set design. That's really important to us. So on the back wall, we have a nice black curtain to give us a bit of a, a vibe a very Joe Rogan-esque a lot of podcasts have that on the back wall or the side walls and that's a just due to giving a nice backdrop color but it also dampens the sound a lot as well which helps the audio quality overall and for this space we've just added two simple bookshelves filled them up with some books and stuff that we personally feel attached to and that we like so just as important as the backdrop is the comfort of your workspace we don't really consider it work I guess it's sort of a, a fun space I just made up a word uh, we're just using a simple IKEA table that's raised up to about waist height. So we're sort of nice and comfortable. It's raised up on some old bricks that we found in the garage. And then we just have some simple stools, some pivoting, swiveling stools from one of the local furniture stores. And that's pretty much all we have. Just a simple backdrop, simple table, simple chairs. So now that we have the audio set up and the studio space set up, this is gonna go on YouTube. So we have to worry about what the lighting is gonna look like and what the camera is gonna look like. So the main light that we're using for our key light is a Godox SL60W. It is raised up on a newer pro heavy duty C stand with a boom arm and a hexadecagon softbox, 35 inches, I believe, with an egg crate grid on the front. On the C stand, it's boosted really, really high and angled down almost directly overhead to give that sort of interrogation feel. We kind of like the way the light falls and the shadows that it creates. In the background, we have a couple of other little backlights for color and pop and vibrancy. For these backlights, we're using two RGB camera lights. These are about 30 or $40, I believe. And they're positioned inwards and upwards in the back of the bookshelves to give it a bit of pop against that black curtain and then above the bookshelves we have two extra lights there by LifeX pointing down and they sort of fill color in on the back of our heads. Now that the lighting's all set up we have to worry about the camera and what it's going to look like on camera and on YouTube. So for this podcast we're just using one single camera and that is the Sony A6400 along with a Sony 18 to 105 millimeter power zoom lens. We're just using a basic 64 gigabyte SD card but the main thing here is having a continuous power supply especially for those longer podcasts you don't want the battery burning out so we have an ac adapter with a continuous power supply into the battery port on the camera to keep the podcast episodes consistent week to week you got to make sure the settings are all dialed in and configured so that they never change between episodes that goes for the audio it goes for the lighting and then obviously goes for the camera as well so the camera settings for our podcast is as follows we run at a 1920 by 1080 resolution 25 frames per second shutter speed 1 over 50 f-stop is 4.0 iso is 800 white balance is 5600 Kelvin and we use a picture profile 5 which is set up for a leaming LUT I'll drop a link in the description about leaming LUTs and all of those settings are dialed in and actually saved on the camera as a memory store so each and every episode all we have to do is twist the dial on the camera select that setting and then we know we're good to go each and every week. So that's the entire gear breakdown for our YouTube podcast studio. It's actually really simple to get going once all the settings are dialed in. If you wanna see the final result of what our podcast studio looks like, hit this link right here to check out our podcast called Look Mum I'm Hustling.